Uh, I'm going to go over and show you guys the best way to, if you have a design to make a bait, or if you're into hand pouring, because a lot of kids out there, I've been noticing you guys have been doing it lately, so give you guys a tip how to make your own creation. Um, first off, I'm going to show you the stuff that you're going to need. Um, this is Plaster of Paris, known as Pop. Uh, I believe this is, this is under $5, and this is 4 pounds of it, so this is going to get you a very long way of molds that you're going to be, going to be making. So right here, it's $5, Plaster of Paris. You're going to need epoxy. Um, this is uh, Loctite. This was about 4 bucks, but the brand I use, I, I do not remember the name, but it started with a D. You can get it at Lowe's for 4 bucks. So this right here, it's under 5 bucks, and this is going to cover about, I'd say about 5 molds, but this is a must-have. So Plaster of Paris, epoxy, uh, super glue. Get this at the dollar store, you get these for a dollar for two of these, so this is another must have. Uh, any kind of container, I make these myself because uh, per certain baits are certain size, so I like to get as close as I can because I don't want to really waste that much of the plaster of Paris. So I just use right here, this is just clear, um, really thick plastic, got my duct tape. Measured my bait out, um, how many I want in a mold. So that's right there, little box. Uh, another mo most important thing is you're going to want oven baked clay. Not any kind of clay, it has to be oven baked because you don't want to burn it or um, fry the, the original kind of clay. Um, you get this at Walmart, it says $5, I believe, between 4 and 5 bucks. And this is a pound, or 1.1 pound. So this is a must have. I'm going to show you guys. Um, next, uh, what to do with this. Alright, first off what you want to do, start off with your oven baked clay. Um, I usually start out with about a good sized chunk, about this size. So start with the clay. What you're going to want to do is basically keen it, because right now it's really stiff and hard. What you want to do is basically keen it, kind of turn it into a play-doh. It's still going to be a lot harder than play-doh, but you're going to want to make it soft so it's uh, moldable. Once you get that, what I usually do, roll it out to a certain length, say if I'm doing a worm, I'm going to want to have it uh, fairly skinny. Um, you want to place it down, uh, any tools you want to use, screwdrivers, um, scalpel knives, that's totally up to you. Um, I just use household tool, uh, tools around the house. Once you get your design down, I'm going to show you guys right here. You guys remember um, the very beginning when I first started posting videos on YouTube for um, Adam's Baits? Uh, here is the 4 inch FT worm. You guys can see that right there. Here's the 4 inch and here's the 3 inch. They're, um, they're identical. And what I basically did is sat there and eyed back and forth because the 3 inch was actually the first one I designed and then I went ahead and did the 4 inch. Uh, so, right there, the first design I ever created uh, getting into this hand pouring business. Uh, so what you want to do, when you finish this, the final mold that you decide that this is the one that you want to um, start making, you want to pop this in the oven. Uh, anything I usually put in the oven with um, oven baked clay, I always range it between 12 to 15 minutes. Uh, never any more than 15. So you want to put this, and also you're going to want to put this like in an oven, oven based um, container. I use a meatloaf pan, uh, glass. Once that is done cooking, you want to let it cool off because once this is cured, this is um, really fragile, so you don't want to break this and have to redo the whole thing over again. It's not fun. Um, once you get that done, you want to take this. Uh, I like to put it on wax paper because what you'll have to do next, again, get more clay, roll it out to the length of the size of your mold, and you're gonna what you're trying to do is press it over that, okay? So basically, I'm going to show you guys right here. I'm not going to do it all the way. I'm just going to show you guys something. Once it's pressed in there, I like to let it sit five minutes and let the the soft clay kind of get hardened up. You want to open it just barely a little bit, peel it kind of back. Take the mold, the creation that you created, and if you guys can see right there, the design's in there. I'm going to you guys show you guys a completed one. Here's a completed four inch FT one, that I, the very first one I designed. So after you get that um, the full imprint in there. You're going to want to bake this in the oven for 12 to 15 minutes, and I cook it at 375, I believe. 
So at 375, 12 to 15 minutes. Once this cures, I'll have to um, cool it off for about five minutes. And then now the epoxy comes in. Um, what epoxy is, it's a tube based chemical glue. Unlike this, this is going to dry instantly. And unlike Elmer's glue, which is going to take about an hour to dry, um, this right here is a quick set, five minute. So you, you really got to work fast with this because once it's hardened, um, trust me, you do not want to get this on your counters or table because you're going to piss off your parents or piss off your wife if you're um, older. So you guys want to be really careful with this and try not to get it on anything. Um, what I use is paintbrushes. At Walmart, you can get a pack for 30 I believe, for only 2 bucks. And they're disposable because once you get this on a paintbrush, it's over with. You got to throw it away. Um, what I do is I pour it onto a piece of foil. You score it out. It's going to come in two sections. See right there? One's clear and one's yellow. Um, once that mixes, it's going to start to get hard. I put it on a foil, mix it with the paintbrush. And then what you want to do is get your mold and do it as fast as you can and gloss the whole inside of that because what, what, what's that going to do? It's going to make the inside of your mold, um, it's not going to make it sticky. So you can pour anything you want in there and that's it's going to make it hard as a rock. That's also going to help with um, not breaking. So with, with just a temporary um, design mold, because this right here is going to be your master mold. Once you get this done, I usually wait about an hour. Um, get plastic, melt it down in your um, Pyrex cups, melt however, however many you want. I usually start out between three and six. So once you pour six, this is just an example. This is a finished product, but once you get this is only a three inch. So once you get six, three to six, you're gonna want to um, pour them out, put them in water, cool them down almost instantly. What you're gonna want to do is get your box and you're also going to want to have another square cut out um, I don't know where the heck it went because I'm moving so everything's getting moved around but you're going to want to get an extra little piece and it's going to slide in and out of there because what you want to do is take say this, with this box I can fit three in there so what you want to do is get your little worm or your hand poured worm set it exactly how you want it I'm just going to do a little fast sketchy display here once you get them where you're going to want to put them you're going to get, want, get a, you're going to want to get your super glue be very careful put it right underneath the bottom of that and you're going to want to set it down there and what that's going to do is once you get all of them set down you're going to take that little piece of plastic I was telling you about and you're going to want to set it in there with the um, worm spacing on top of it okay so once you get that you get your plaster of Paris. Um, I like to use uh, cheap little plastic cups because you don't you don't you don't want to ruin your household cups. Um, the mixing for this, they say it's two to one, but what I like to do is I think I start out with between usually with a small container like this, it's usually one fourth. So I get one fourth cup of plaster plaster of Paris, put it inside the um, cup, and then get one fourth of a cup of water put it in there, stir it, and of course if you need more then you can add a little bit at a time until you want you want it to be really thick, kind of a little bit more thicker than pancake batter. So once you get that mixed up, you're going to want to mix it for about five minutes, you're going to notice it's going to get warm in your cup. So mix it until you get all the chunks out. And then with your worms still inside there on that piece of plastic I was telling you guys about, you want to pour the plaster of Paris mix on top of that really slow try not to hit the plastic because if you hit the plastic you're going to create air bubbles so when you're pouring it you, you want to pour it on the plastic part trying to touch the the mold when you're pouring it um, if you have too much it's okay you set it aside uh, the only thing you do not want is you do not, do not want to come up short so it's really good to measure say I put one fourth cup of water in there I want to make sure it's going to cover the worms if it's not then I'm going to add one third so once you get that inside there, what I like to do is take this and just bang it like this right on the surface. Um, kind of bang the sides again. And then what you want to do is bang it again. Uh, there's a possibility that that piece of plastic in there with the mold is going to want to float up. So I usually get a piece of um, a toothpick or a knife 
and just kind of shove it in there and push it all the way back down. And that's probably going to cure in about an hour, depending on the humidity around your house. Uh, if it's warm, it's going to go a lot faster, but if it's cold, it's going to take forever. Uh, I usually put it in front of my heater. It's going to be an hour. It's going to be completely done. So, and that's about it. Um, once it gets done, I'm going to show you guys right here. Once it gets done, it's going to look exactly like this, okay? What you want to do, you want to make sure it sounds like this. You don't want it to be that really soft because when you first do it, it's going to be soft, okay? And you got to be careful about that because uh, if you actually press it, you will squish it in. So I like to go like this and pop it right out. It'll come out really easily. What it's going to look like is you're going to have your worms... You're going to have your worms still in there like that. They're going to be pressing all the way though. That piece of plastic that I told you guys to glue to, it's going to come out with it. And what you want to do is just peel it all the way out. And these worms, they will come out with the plastic. And then what you're going to have is your mold, your indent right there. Um, right after you take the worms out, I like to wait at least a week. Depending on how hot it is, um, if you leave these out in front of your heater for, for about 24 hours, um, it's they'll be good enough to epoxy in the inside, but if I prefer you guys wait at least three days to a week, because um, you want this um, the plaster of Paris to be completely cured. You want all the moisture out of it. Because what's going to happen if you put your epoxy uh, mix, get your paintbrush and paint it in there. Um, if there's moisture in this, it's going to want to suck the epoxy in, and you're going to ruin the mold. So you want all the moisture to be out of your um, mold before you um, before you coat it. Um, when it's dry, get your epoxy, get your paintbrush, put it on the foil, and then there you go, and just start working and get all the grooves out uh, and let it clear. And then these are ready to pour within 24 hours. Um, the epoxy takes 24 hours to completely cure, but for this, it's not a big deal to me because I'm only using this once, basically. So, five minutes for this, or sorry, an hour for this one right here to cure, and I can start pouring. Uh, this one, since it is your final mold, I'd prefer you guys to wait 24 hours. So you can see right here, this is the three-inch flat tail worm, first creation I created, and that is it. And once you guys get um, your molds completed, these are actually the worms right here that I poured with this mold. I poured these about shoot, probably about six months ago, and that's what you can get with them. Just a three inch rib worm, little flat tail. Um, and this is also a really cheap way to use it compared to the RTV mold. Uh, RTV mold is a rubber based compound. Uh, it is really expensive if you guys screw up a mold. Um, that is a big chunk of change missing out of your pocket if you guys uh, screw up something. So if you're not really sure what to do. So again, Plaster of Paris, aka Pop Mold. Uh, really cheap, it's really affordable. As I said, um, under five bucks, four pounds. Under five bucks, five bucks, a dollar, and that's about it. And this household stuff, you get plastic, duct tape, doesn't matter. So, pretty sure you guys have this in your house. So there it is. This is all you need to create your own creation for your hand poured molds, and also some paint brushes. So, thank you guys for watching. I hope this video helps you guys and you guys um, young kids out there trying to get your little business going up because this is a really good way to um, make your own creation this is a really good way to start you guys out so thank you guys for watching um, and take care and stay tuned for more fishing videos